Hello, today we're going to talk about the cell cycle. This is the process where one cell is going to split to become two cells. Remember that cells are the most basic structure and function of a living thing, and all cells come from pre-existing cells. That is to say, they are born from cells that came before them. Those are the three parts of the cell theory. Also remember that all organisms are made of one or more cells, and this is one of the characteristics of a living thing. We've talked about several of these characteristics. Two others were growth and reproduction, both of which the cell cycle is going to have quite a bit to do with. There are two types of reproduction, sexual and asexual, and today we're going to focus on asexual reproduction. A for without and sex for exchanging DNA. So this is a type of reproduction where one organism is going to copy itself so that it has two genetically identical offspring. And those offspring are genetically identical to each other and the parent from where they came. Now, there are different types of asexual reproduction. We're going to focus on mitosis today, which is done by eukaryotes, U for true and karyo for nucleus. So these are organisms whose cells have a nucleus. Now, multicellular eukaryotes are going to use mitosis to grow, to add cells to the body in order to become bigger. So baby organisms have less cells than the adult organisms of the same type would have. Other ways multicellular eukaryotes use mitosis is to repair damage. So if you get a cut, for example, that cut needs to repair itself. So the cells around it are going to copy themselves in order to fill up that gap, hopefully with cells very similar to what were there before that damage. Single-celled eukaryotes like our protists, for example, are going to use mitosis to reproduce as individuals and increase the numbers of the population. Now, prokaryotes also use asexual reproduction. These are things like bacteria and archaea that evolve before a nucleus, so they do not have one. Now, prokaryotes use a different form of asexual reproduction called binary fission, and we'll distinguish between binary fission and mitosis more here in just a few minutes. Asexual reproduction is um, advantageous in a couple of ways. It's very quick and that makes it efficient. It's quick because there's no need to find a partner to exchange DNA with. And just to give you an idea of how quick it can be, if one E. coli cell gets into your body, in your stomach, for example, where there are ideal conditions for its survival, an E. coli cell can reproduce every 20 minutes. So one E. coli cell can make one million E. coli cells in less than six and a half hours. And you can imagine if you're eating something contaminated with E. coli, for example, you're not just going to be eating one of those bacteria. There's going to be more than that in that food. Now, asexual reproduction works well for environments that do not change very much. All of those organisms in that colony that were a, reproduced asexually from one parent organism are going to be identical to each other. So if there is a change to the environment and one of the organisms is not tolerant to that change, then none of them probably will be and it will kill the entire colony because they are all identical to one another. So in order for asexual reproduction to work, those organisms need to be able to survive in an environment that doesn't change very much because genetically they probably just can't handle one that changes frequently. And we already said mitosis is used for growth and repair. Now over here we have a pie chart showing you the different phases of the cell cycle. We can think of the cell cycle as the process where a little baby cell that's just born is going to take in material from its environment and it's going to grow and get bigger and one day it's going to have enough resources to split off and make little baby cells of its own. Now all of this is going on in the cell due to a certain sequence of chemical reactions that's very tightly controlled. The product of one set of chemical reactions is going to be the reactant to kick off a new set of chemical reactions. Um, usually all facilitated by proteins and being made at the right time. Now the code for how to make those proteins and when to make those proteins, so which chemical reactions to do and um, when, is all encoded for in DNA. And this DNA molecule is going to be very important to pass on identically to the next generation of cells if we want that cell cycle to progress in the same way in the offspring as it did 
in the parent cell. Now the cell cycle is going to start with one parent cell and it's going to split into two daughter cells. And there are three phases of the cell cycle, interphase, mitosis, and cytokinesis. And oftentimes these are lumped together into one phase, the mitotic phase. If we look at this pie chart of the cell cycle, you can see the interphase is the longest phase and the mitotic phase takes up very little of the cell's life. Um, you can't see the different phases of the mitotic phase in this pie chart, but you can see that interphase has been broken down into three phases, G1, S, and G2, and then there's also this G0 phase. We mentioned that interphase is the longest phase of the cell cycle. This is the phase where the cell is growing and doing its normal thing. It's replicating its DNA. It's making preparations for cell division, but it's not dividing yet. There are three phases to interphase, G1, S, and G2. And I want you to think of the Gs as growth, even though they mean gap, but growth is the theme that you'll see in the G phases. And S, I want you to think synthesis because we are synthesizing DNA here. So let's walk through these. During G1, the cell has just been born, so it's going to grow in size, its organelles are going to replicate, it's going to make all the proteins that it needs for uh, copying its DNA. Uh, once it's got enough resources, it's going to use those proteins and go through DNA replication. Each chromosome is going to make a copy of itself. So we call this chromosome and its exact copy sister chromatids, and they're going to be attached at a point called the centromere. We often represent sister chromatids as X's in diagrams. So you'd have the chromosome and its exact copy and where they're attached is the centromere. After the DNA has been synthesized, then the cell is going to stop for a minute and check and make sure that DNA is copied correctly. It's gonna to continue to grow while it does this and prepare for mitosis and get all of those proteins uh, ready and in order. During interphase, your DNA is still going to be all spread out. It's, you can think of it like a spool of yarn that's been completely unwound and all over the place. At the end of G2, once all of the proteins have been assembled and the DNA has been checked to make sure it's accurately replicated, the cell is going to move forward with dividing. And so we call this mitosis in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes have a nucleus that contains their DNA and they're gonna to need to split that DNA between the two daughter cells so that each daughter cell has a complete and identical set of um, DNA. Now, this is why prokaryotes do not go through mitosis. They do not have a nucleus um, to divide. So they go through a similar process called binary fission but it happens without a nucleus and with circular chromosomes instead of linear chromosomes. Um, but underlying idea here, mitosis is the division of the nucleus. One nucleus divides into two nuclei uh, and there are four phases. We call them prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. There is no pause in between these phases. And we're gonna look at each one of them. Pro means first, and this is the first phase of mitosis. Remember in interphase how we said that DNA was all scattered out in the nucleus as chromatin? Well, in prophase, we're going to need to package all of that DNA up. We're going to need to wind it up into structures called chromosomes because it's going to need to be moved around the cell. Think of it like having that ball of yarn that's un unwound and scattered all around a room. Now you have to move that yarn somewhere. It's going to be a lot easier to wind that, that yarn back up into a spool and carry the whole ball than it is to just grab handfuls of it and try to drag it out of the room. So prophase, first thing that's going to happen, that, that uncoiled DNA as chromatin is going to condense into visible chromosomes. And we often see those represented as X's or sister chromatids. Now we do have to separate the material that's in this nucleus. So the nucleus is going to break down. It's the second thing that's gonna happen here. In animal cells, we have these centrioles. They're gonna to migrate to opposite poles and they're gonna form this special cytoskeleton called spindle fibers. And they make this spindle fiber out of the thicker elements of the cytoskeleton called microtubules. Um, 
So all of this is happening during prophase. Meta means middle, and only a couple of key things are happening during metaphase. Remember our DNA copied itself during S phase of interphase, so we have these sister chromatids, a chromosome and its exact copy. And these sister chromatids are held together at the centromere. Now during metaphase, these sister chromatids line up in the middle of the cell, and these spindle fibers, these pieces of cytoskeleton, are going to connect to their centromere. You'll notice these are coming out of the centriole. Anna means away, and only a couple key things are going to happen here. These centrioles are going to pull on their spindle fibers, which are connected to these chromatids at the centromere. And when these spindle fibers pull on these sister chromatids, they're going to pull them apart from the centromere. So each chromosome is separated from its exact copy. And each cell is going to get a duplicate copy of the parent chromosomes. This is an identical set of DNA to what we have being pulled over here to this side of the cell. Tele means distant, like telephone lets you talk to people in a distant location. So telophase is when our nuclei are going to distance themselves from one another. This is also called reverse prophase because everything that happened in prophase is now going to happen in reverse. So once our chromosomes have reached opposite ends of the cell, they're going to start to uncoil and go back into chromatins, like our spool of yarn is coming unwound again. These spindle fibers, which were made in prophase, are going to break back down and their parts are going to be recycled and used for other things. The nuclear membrane, which broke down in prophase, is going to reform here in telophase around each of these new nuclei. And we're going to have the beginnings of division between the cytoplasm and the organelles going into opposite cells. So telophase, notice we have one cell and two nuclei. And sometimes cells don't go through cytokinesis and split to make two completely new cells. You'll wind up with one cell and multiple nuclei. This happens in muscle cells, for example. Most cells, however, are going to go through cytokinesis. They're going to split their cytoplasm and other organelles so that we have two cells, one nucleus in each of those cells, and they're going to be identical to one another. Now with animal cells, we're going to have these membranes form a cleavage furrow, kind of like a ditch here on all around, and they're just going to pinch off from one another and kind of like that. Okay. Now with plants, we're going to have a big rectangular cell and so those cells are not going to be able to pinch apart, but they'll build a wall between one another. And so you end up with two cells that can grow separately from there. Now, after cytokinesis, our new cells are going to be in interphase. And from here, they will start the cell cycle all over again. But there are certain types of cells that don't move past interphase. They get stuck and they will never reproduce. We call that the G-naught phase or G0. And some cells that uh, never uh, go past interphase would be certain types of brain cells or certain types of neurons. Hopefully you've already done your mitosis virtual lab, so this might look familiar to you. This is a slide of onion root cells. And when we look at a thin slice of onion root under the microscope, there's a good chance that we're going to find cells in different phases of mitosis because roots are heavily damaged when they move through the soil getting scuffed and scraped by soil particles so they constantly have to repair through mitosis. So we're going to see if we can find some different cells in different phases of the cell cycle. Keep in mind that the DNA is this blue stuff that you see dyed in each cell. So let's look for some cells in interphase. Remember that interphase is a very common phase because the cell spends most of its life here and our DNA is all spread out as chromatin and it's doing its job. So here would be some examples of cells in interphase, pretty much all of these. 
All right, let's look for some cells in prophase. Remember that in prophase, our DNA is coiling up from chromatin into chromosomes, and we see that starting to happen here. So this cell would be in prophase. Our nucleus has disappeared, and we are getting ready for the next phase. Metaphase. Let's see if we can find some cells in metaphase. Remember, meta means middle. So our chromosomes are lining up in the middle. We see that here and here. And our next phase would be anaphase. We can see that happening here. Our chromosomes are being pulled away from one another. And now let's look for telophase. Remember in telophase, our nucleus is splitting in half and our chromosomes are going to spread back out into chromatin and we see that right here. We have one more phase, cytokinesis. Let's see if we can find that. And remember cytokinesis is splitting one cell into two cells. The nucleus is already um, split and we are looking at division of the cytoplasm and organelles. So here in a plant cell we can see that cell wall being built between these two cells, but it's not complete yet. So we can find all the different phases of the cell cycle in this root slide. Remember mitosis is division of the nucleus, so eukaryotes can do it. Prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, so they cannot go through mitosis. They use a different process. But mitosis is used as a form of asexual reproduction, especially in unicellular eukaryotes like protists, but also in some of our multicellular eukaryotes as well. This hydra here, for example, is a multicellular eukaryote, and it is growing baby hydras off the side of its body through mitosis, and we call this budding. It's basically cloning itself, and one day these little baby hydras will break free and go forth and live life on their own. Mitosis is also used in multicellular eukaryotes to replace older damaged cells in the body. So uh, your skin cells are always sloughing off. They need to be replaced as they get old and worn out. Um, anytime you have a cut or an injury, you need to replace the damaged cells in the body. So these are your somatic cells, your body cells, and they have two sets of chromosomes or a complete set of your DNA. Pretty much everything except eggs and sperm. Um, for, for organisms. Mitosis also enables growth in multicellular organisms. This is just an increase in the number of cells within an organism. Like we said, a baby organism has less cells than the adult of that type would have. The cell cycle has checkpoints to make sure that everything is going smoothly in the cell's life. So remember that cells are programmed to perform chemical reactions in certain sequences. The products of one set of chemical reactions will be the reactants to another set of chemical reactions. And proteins are going to be made at certain times to carry out these chemical reactions. And some proteins are there to make sure things are going the way they should be. For example, in G1, there are proteins making sure the cell is big enough and has enough resources to produce more DNA and to copy itself. If the cell starts to reproduce when it's too small, it might not have enough resources and that could be fatal for it. There is um, a set of proteins in S at the end of S phase going into G2 that makes sure DNA is copied correctly. It's a very important molecule and we need to make sure that the daughter cells get the exact copy that the parent cell had. If there's a mistake in the DNA, then there will be a pause here while the cell tries to fix it. Um, there is another checkpoint, certain proteins that are around during metaphase to make sure that these sister chromatids are aligned in the center of the cell and that they're attached to spindle fibers that are pulling um, with equal tension to opposite poles so that those sister chromatids are separated from one another instead of one cell pulling two chromosomes over the whole sister chromatid over and getting two copies of that chromosome while the other cell gets no copies of that chromosome. So these checkpoints are very important. And if something should happen and these checkpoints fail and the cell cycle continue, then you can have mutations that, that continue to cause problems with the cell cycle in the future. 
and those mutations can accumulate and these faulty cells can start reproducing faster than healthy cells. And that's where we get things like tumors and cancers. Scientists can give a group of cells chemicals to pause the cell cycle at a particular place and then give them another set of chemicals so that all of the cells pick up in the exact same spot at the exact same time. So mitosis will happen all at once in that group of cells. So this is a really cool video of mitosis in real time. It's only like 20 seconds. You should definitely check it out. It's really cool to watch. Uh, but I want you to get the idea here that there is no pause between these different phases of the cell cycle, but just watch and see if you can find these different phases. I'm not going to play it here. You'll have to pull it up yourself. But here are your centrioles. Here are your spindle fibers. And once this starts, you'll be able to see your chromosomes lit up as well and watch them move throughout the cell. So definitely check this video out, it's pretty cool. Before we take off, let's make sure we can identify all the phases of the cell cycle, know what's going on in each phase, and be able to put them in order when they're all mixed up. So take a good look at these, and if you need more time, then you can pause, but we want the order and we want their names and just know what's happening. If you need more time, then you can pause, but let's deal with the order first. Hopefully you said D comes first, then B, E, C, and A. So let's talk about the names and what's going on. In D, we have interphase. Our chromosomes are all spread out as chromatin. And we have a blue chromosome that's long and a short blue, a long orange, and a short orange chromosome here in figure D. In B, we have prophase. Our centrioles have duplicated. They've migrated to opposite ends of the pole of the cell. We have our spindle fibers that are forming from those centrioles and our, our DNA has condensed into chromosomes. So now we have our sister chromatids, these X shapes. We have one that's a big blue and a little blue, one that's a big orange and a little orange a set of sister chromatids. In E, we have metaphase. All of our chromosomes have lined up in the center of the cell and the spindle fibers have attached to the sister chromatid at the centromere, that central point. And we have a long blue and a long orange and a, a short blue and a short orange, okay? In C, we have anaphase and we can see that our chromosomes are being pulled apart. Our sister chromatids have been separated. So we have a chromosome and its exact copy being pulled to opposite ends of the poles. In A, we have telophase, and this is reverse prophase. So the nucleus is coming back now. We have our DNA that's going to spread back out into chromatin, and we have a long blue and long orange and a short blue and a short orange in each of these nuclei. So they are identical to one another. And at this point, the cell is going to start to pinch apart.